Welcome to the Modern Application Development Screencast. In this short screencast, we will learn how to use SQL Alchemy inside a Flask web app using an extension called Flask SQL Alchemy. This one here. Before we start, open the following applications on your de Ubuntu desktop so that you can work along with me. A browser, Chrome is fine. Uh, or you can use Firefox, uh, text editor. In this case, actually, we are not going to use a text editor. I would prefer use some kind of uh, IDE, which has, you know, syntax highlighting, some, you know, help regarding coding, project management and stuff like that. So we could use one of the available open source uh, IDEs like Atom or VSodium or Gini. Visual Studio, PyCharm is, you know, not open source, but if you want, there is a free community edition that you can use, or there is a professional version if you are ready to pay. There's Thorny, again, now open source. Sublime Text, it's not an open source, it's a paid version. And then, of course, uh, if you don't want to install any of this, you can use an online editor uh, or an IDE like Replit, right? We are going to use one of these and then also we are going to repeat the same thing using a pip. I'm going to use uh, something called sublime text, right? And then I'm going to repeat quickly using uh, a plate so you can all uh, do it on a plate too. There's not much difference, but I'll just show it to you, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to close this. Okay. So, and then you need a terminal, uh, internal terminal is fine, right? And then uh, we just need to create a project uh, and we are creating a project called experiment dash flask SQL alchemy. I've already created a project and what I've done is I've copied the database which we used last time in our uh, SQL alchemy experiment. You can see that here I opened it in DB browser for SQLite. You can open the browser and see it's the same data, article, article, authors and user, right? We're going to use the same database for this experiment too. And then I've created a, a file called main.py. It's currently empty. I'm just going to open that in, you know, my sublime text. You can see that it has, uh, I'm in the folder and it has main.py and testdb.sklite3 like as usual we'll start with uh, creating a requirements.txt file right uh, .txt file i'm just going to add only two requirements flask and flask sql alchemy right this is the extension of flask that we are going to use now we're going to go to command line and we'll start with as usual uh, creating the virtual environment right now uh, for that uh, we have to run the command let me just uh, paste that command for you know quicker uh, access right here Yeah, I'm creating a virtual environment called this in the same folder uh, of this project. I'm already in this folder. You can see I'm already in that folder, right? It will take a minute. You can see it's getting created. Okay. Now we're going to enable it, which is done by sourcing it, right? Sourcing dot experiment bin activate. Yeah, it's sourced. I can just test it Python minus uh, minus version it's Python 3 which Python should show you the path which is into the current folder or uh, virtual environment right okay now virtual environment is created and it's enabled now let's install everything that is there in the requirements.txt that will be uh, pip 3 install 
minus r requirements dot txt. We'll take a minute to install the things. It's installed, right? Now we'll start with our main dot py. Right. I'm just going to remove the default statement that I had written. Now we're going to go back and create our simple Flask application. Now I'm going to import, you know, a Flask related, uh, you know, uh, modules. Right, Flask Flask related stuff. Now uh, we're going to use the same. Um, uh, SQLite uh, Alchemy uh, extension. So I'm going to import that too. Right. Okay. Now we're done with the import. I'm going to create a Flask app. Yeah, let's, we have done this before. So I'm just doing it. And then um, there is one change that we need to do here because we want to instantiate our DB uh, through SQL Alchemy, which is what we had done before using the SQL Alchemy, but here we're going to do it through the extension. It's a little more easier. That's then done by setting the app config, SQL Alchemy database URI. Set this, set this to uh, colon slash 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 and name of this, okay? Just going to copy, paste, right? But I mean, I don't want it to be like this. I wanted to use it in the current folder. So I'm just going to create a current folder uh, variable by reading, you know, dynamically what is the current folder. And then, you know, I'm going to use that. So I'm going to import OS and get the current directory. You know, this is how you get the current directory. Now I'm just going to attach current directory and path of, you know, escalate tree. Yeah, just going to remove this extra press. Right now, um, this is set up, right? I'm going to initialize the DB and then, you know, set it in the Flask app. So here we're setting up the DB by calling this and then initializing the uh, DB app by passing the Flask and then pushing it to context. Now what it does is it actually reads this variable which is pointing to this database and then initializes everything and we are set. Right now again uh, like last time we had to write model. Now Instead of importing the base model from SQL Alchemy, we're going to import the base model everything from Flask SQL Alchemy. That's the probably the only difference, and otherwise it remains the same, right? I'm just going to copy paste it to make it quick. Here it is, right? The only difference is you can see here I'm referring everything with respect to DB, right? Which is SQL Alchemy, which is Flask SQL Alchemy here. Same thing, integer comes from DB, column comes from DB, same thing with, you know, foreign key comes from DB, etc, etc. Rest of them or the way you set up relationship, set up other thing, will all remain the same, right? We're just using now from SQ, Flask SQL Alchemy instead of directly using from SQL Alchemy. That's it. That's the only difference, right? Now we have set up all the models and everything, just going to write the main class to start the Flask app here. What I'm doing is I'm binding into the local and then enabling the debug and then setting the port to 8080, right? Now I should be able to run it. Nothing will happen, but at least it should run, right? So let's see. So it's running. I mean, nothing will happen. I think if I go to this uh, path, uh, which is my local host, uh, it might throw 404 because there's no control setup. Yeah, but it's running. Now let's just set up one hello world uh, 
thing as usual, right? We always used to do hello world. So, and then we can change that. Home, right? And then this points to base, right? I'm going to route it to base. And I'm going to create a templates folder like last time, like in the flask cup, we created the template folder to keep all our templates. Okay. A new folder templates, you know, by default flask reads all of its templates from templates folder, right? Hence doing that. I'm going to create a new file inside that. I'm going to call it uh, home dot html i'm not going to do much i'm just going to test it so i'm just going to put hello right and here i'm just going to render that this is just for testing that everything is working right the setup is working so at least now when i go to slash you should go to hello.html and print hello. Let's see, uh, run it, okay. Go back here, go push hello. Okay, so now our setup is working, basic flash setup is working. Now we have not yet connected and done anything with respect to the database, right? We have not done anything. We set up the model, but we have not done anything. Now, you know, this is articles and users. Uh, it's like a blog or an article or a news site. So the home page, actually, I wanted it to be list of articles. I don't want it to be some hello, you know, message. I actually wanted it to be um, list of articles displayed. So let's say uh, instead of home, let it call it articles, right? And also create a template called articles instead of home.html. So I'm going to just rename it to articles.html. Right. So here, how are we going to get articles? We need to get articles from article table, right? Article model. So it's it's quite straightforward. So we're just going to get all the articles from this table. So that's straightforward. Articles is equal to article dot query dot all. This statement of SQL Alchemy will give you all the articles from this article model or rather all the rows from this article model. There are other ways to write it as well. You know, you can also use, for example, the other way of querying, which is using the db dot session dot query and then dot all. Uh, but I think this is more intuitive. So let's use this. Now we've got all the articles, right? We can print them, but it doesn't make any sense, right? We need to use them in the template. So I'm going to pass it to the template as articles, right? I'm passing it to the uh, template as, tem um, as articles. So we have renamed the template. So let it be articles.html now it's going there right um, and let's see whether we are getting it there let's not print here let's just do just simple ginger and just directly print articles this is just debugging making sure things are working right so this is going to start going to Fresh. So I'm going to get an array of six articles, right? See, uh, let's see whether we go, let's go to uh, articles table. Oh yeah, there are six articles. So, you know, now we somehow need a way to display these articles. So we'll create a HTML, right? So here I've created a template HTML. Um, base template and you know everything minimal tags that are required i'm just going to put uh, um, title as all articles now you know i don't want to design 
every part of CSS by myself. I want to use uh, Bootstrap, right? So I'm going to go to get Bootstrap and get started. And I'm going to use that CSS line from here. Okay. You're going to use that CSS. Like in Bootstrap, uh, the first thing that we want to create is a container, right? Let's put a container. container div here right um, that's just done by just adding a div container right like this right so now i want to actually um, divide the section of the page into two parts uh, like um, like this you know this is the main list of articles i'm just doing a wireframe here and you know i want to have a sidebar here and i want a top header here like a header section just displaying something this is my you know simple bootstrap so i'm just this whole thing will be in the container we are going to add this part this part and this part for the header section uh, we can add something called jumbotron uh, this is also from the uh, bootstrap right so this is the one this is the header section so i'm just going to make it like a header section here uh, we can rename it later right and within the rest, I want to divide into these two things. Now, you know that you can do that by uh, layouting, right? I'm not going to go into much of it. You can look into um, a bootstrap tutorial or you can look into this area here. Now, I'm going to create a, a row and then create two columns. Since the whole width is 12, I'm going to create for the main section, um, column width of 8 and for the sidebar column width of 4 right uh, that's also done by first creating the row um, let's do CSS row and then within the row I want to divide that into two parts um, which is one is you know uh, of column length 8 and then other one is column length 4 right here our main blog listing section right this is our side bar Let's see how it looks, okay? I'm just going to save it. Uh, restart it just in case. And go back to localhost 880 and refresh it. So you can see that, you know, there is header section, there is a uh, main blog listing section and the sidebar. I'm not added the border, but you know, you don't need to, but you can add it as well if you want to.